Hey there. Tessa from Douglas County just called. She's got five cases of Salmonella brandrup, onsets all in the last month, mostly in kids, evenly split between males and females. Well, the lab just called and said we had a bunch of cases of Salmonella brandrup in southern and central Oregon, but we haven't gotten the age range yet. And nothing from the Portland metro area? Nope. Nothing from any other state? I already checked. Nothing that matches my molecular typing so far. Okay, so um, if this is foodborne, we're looking at something that's sold locally and not nationally. Something that's eaten mostly by kids, but not exclusively by kids. Yeah. What could it be? I don't know. I guess we should get started on investigations, and it could be big. As you get started with outbreak interviewing, there are 10 cardinal rules to bear in mind. We'll go through these one by one. Okay, between February 4th and February 11th, did you eat any romaine lettuce? No. Other leafy lettuce like red, green, or butter lettuce? No. Nope. Arugula, endive, chard, watercress, or other salad greens? No. Any mescaline, spring mix, or baby salad items? Wait, what? Any mescaline, spring mix, or, uh, or no, baby salad? No, I think it's pronounced mescaline. What the heck is that? That's nothing. Wait till we get to the part about baba ganoush. By practicing your introduction, and going through the questionnaire with a colleague before you go live, you can iron out any pronunciation issues and feel more comfortable with the interviewing process. Okay, now I'm going to ask you about the kinds of places you might have eaten in the seven days before you got sick. Okay, did you eat, did you eat at any fast food restaurants? No? Okay, a grocery store? No? A grocery store deli or uh, other kind of deli? No? Okay. A bakery? Dessert place? Pastry place? Picking out a quiet spot where you won't be distracted or interrupted makes things easier for you and easier on the person being interviewed. And how many sexual partners have you had in the past month? Four. Oh my. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, are you serious? Uh, well actually, it's more like one. By remaining value neutral, a good interviewer is less likely to influence the responses of the person being interviewed. You are interviewing them, after all, to find out what might have happened to make them sick. You don't eat that much meat, do you? No, not really. Am I right that you generally eat a pretty healthy diet? I suppose. No butter, sour cream, mayonnaise, things like that? It may be tempting to anticipate what someone will answer. By avoiding this common pitfall, you can get more objective, accurate responses. Next, I'm going to ask you about vegetables you ate in the week before you got sick, even if, if it was only a bite. I don't really eat vegetables. Uh, let me write that down. In this case, the interviewer has misinterpreted a general statement about preferences as a specific answer to her question. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. Yes, you really did. I have to agree on that one. Sorry. It's important to record accurately what people say and to ask each question, unless the outbreak team has decided some questions can be cut out if no cases are reporting these exposures. Hi, this is Doug. Oh yeah, thanks for calling, Steve. This is Steve Jenkins, right? Good. Are we speaking privately, Steve? Yeah, the reason I ask that is that I'm calling from public health and I'm calling about your visit to Dr. Perez's office. Okay, Dr. Perez said that somebody be calling you. Okay, so I'd like to talk to you now if that's good for you. All right, good. Probably about maybe 20 minutes or so. Correct. You got treated. When did you get treated for the syphilis infection, Steve? Just two days ago. Okay, how are you feeling now? Well, what I wanted to talk to you about was your sexual partners like in the last about six or seven months. Well, it's not likely to get this bad, but it's important to be aware of your surroundings and to protect the privacy of people you're interviewing. Okay, ma'am, did you visit a doctor when you had your intestinal infection? Oh, yes. Yeah, I talked to uh, Dr. Salinger, I believe. He's such a nice man. Girls, you guys are too loud. Can you please go upstairs? Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Salinger, he's from Cleveland, but he, uh, so I don't really get to see him that much. 
He's in for covering for Dr. Lopez, and I think I saw him for the flu or for a cold. I can't really remember. Oh, but he's such a nice man. Yeah, um, he called me at, at 7.30 this morning, and I said, oh, Dr. Salinger, you are in at work awfully early. And he said, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and well, wise. So you Maybe he was talking about the early bird and the worm. I can't really remember. Okay, so it sounds like you did go see a doctor for this. Did you have to go to the emergency room too? No. And did you have to stay overnight in the hospital at that time? No. And has anyone else been sick in your house with the same symptoms? No. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Now I'd like to ask you about some foods that you ate in the last seven to 10 days before you got sick, even if it was just for a bite. Let's start with Part of the art of effective interviewing is to strike the right balance between conducting an efficient, concise interview and providing opportunity for the person being interviewed to provide additional detail, some of which may provide clues as to the cause of the outbreak. Give folks a chance to give you that detail and be courteous, but if the conversation is straying, gently bring the subject back to the interview topic, particularly if you have more people to interview that evening. So what time last week did you first get sick? It was Monday. And when on Monday was that? Uh, it was late that night. Well, what's your best guess of the actual time? 2.30? 2.30 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, so that was Tuesday at 2.30 a.m. Yeah, that's right. The more precise you can be in pinning down answers, the better. This is particularly important for onset of illness, because illness onsets are useful in determining both what pathogen might be involved, and how it may have been transmitted. Hola. Uh, hello, this is Michelle Barber from the State Public Health Division. Can I please speak to Patricia Mitchell? ¿En qué le puedo ayudar? Uh, hello, is there someone there who speaks English? Discúlpeme, no le entiendo. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. I'll have someone who speaks Spanish call back shortly. Muchas gracias. Thank you. If you contact a potential interviewee, and the two of you don't share a common language, politely end the call and notify the lead epi, who can arrange for another interviewer or an interpreter-assisted call. Any contact with animals or pets at school, birthday parties, or similar events? No. Any contact with dry or dog or cat food? No. How about any contact with any commercial type of fresh or frozen pet food that is not dry or canned? Okay then, thank you for helping us with these questions. We will combine the information with other people's information. The interviews are very helpful to us trying to understand and determine what has caused the illness. Sometimes, depending on what we find, we may need to follow up again. Do you have another number that we can use in case I need to reach you again? Sure, 503-867-5309. Great, thank you so much for your help and thanks for uh, talking to us. You're very welcome. Stay safe. Folks who are game to be interviewed deserve a vote of thanks and a little background about how their participation in the investigation process makes a difference. We may need to get back to them with specific questions, so it's good to mention that too.